So you want a dog. Here's some things to think about. Hey everyone, my name is Clarissa. I'm 25 years old and this is my little pup, Luna. She is a chihuahua mix. Not really sure what she is. She's a mutt, but we love her. She's about to turn two years old, so I think this is a really good time for me to give a little review on getting a dog in my early 20s. Luna has been such a joy, but a little bit of a challenge. I got Miss Luna in May of 2021 and I actually found her on Craigslist. Be safe, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. It was actually an accident to my knowledge that her family dog had these pups, so, you know, their accident is my gain. I see it as that. I knew that I wanted a dog. I was fully established in my new apartment and it was just the next step of what I wanted to do for myself. I started off by getting food bowls, the puppy pads, a dog bed, a crate, and the little essentials as well. I wasn't sure what food she was already eating, so I just waited until I picked her up to ask what they were feeding her, so that way I wouldn't mess up her tummy too much. I also got her a doggy car seat because at this time I was traveling a lot, and I kind of still do. I just drive a lot, so it was kind of an essential to have a dog car seat for her. Funny enough, I have to be honest with you, I did not want a puppy. I was 23 years old at the time. I had just gotten my first big girl job and I knew that taking care of a puppy was gonna be so much work. At this time, I was driving into the city for work every single day and I would get home at like 5.30 if I was lucky, but usually it was six o'clock or later. So I knew that having a puppy would be really challenging. I knew that I would have to get really creative with how I was gonna take care of her while I was out all day. I tried and tried and tried I searched on so many websites. I went to so many shelters, but I could not find a small adult dog anywhere. I was even willing to get like an elderly old dog, you know, just to take care of and, and have around because I really didn't want a puppy. But in the end, I saw this picture of her on Craigslist and I just fell in love with her, her little side profile. She was exactly what I was looking for, a little chihuahua, a little cute one at that. I just, it, it the rest was history and I decided to do it. Now let's talk about living situations. Situation. Living situation goes hand in hand with lifestyle. At the time I was living in a high rise so it wasn't easy to just open the back door and let her out all the time. I had to hook her to the leash, take her down the stairs. Well, not even down the stairs. I had to hook her to the leash, take her down the hallway, to the elevator, pray that she didn't pee in the elevator or poop. And sometimes it did happen because she didn't have any concept of where she should be going to the bathroom. Those were the really early days. Keep that in mind if you're in a high rise, it's gonna be really difficult to potty train them. So keep in mind the building type. Are you renting a house? Do you own a house? Owning a house is probably the best option if you wanna get a puppy puppy, but you can do it if you live in a high rise. Now I live in a two story apartment. All I have to do is go downstairs, that's really good. Good. Other things to consider with living situation is if you are renting, a lot of landlords want pet rent. Luckily, my pet rent here is not bad at all, but I've seen it just ridiculous. Like my pet rent is only $30. I don't think it's that big of a deal, whatever, take my money. But other places I saw $50, $90, $100. Some in major cities, I think even $150 a month to have your dog there. And that's per pet. So please keep this in mind if you're thinking of getting a pet and you're renting, that's a huge hurdle and don't forget about the pet deposit either you're gonna be really restricted once you have a pet so please make sure that this is your forever buddy you're never gonna let go of them no matter what the circumstances are let's talk about the cost I talked about some of the things that I bought to prep for Luna such as the crate and the food and the puppy pads and all that good stuff Luna doesn't need grooming but I take her to the groomer sometimes anyway because there are seasons where she sheds like crazy so I'd rather have them wash her with the de-shedding shampoo and blow dry her to get all the excess hair out and that has really helped maintain my space with the pet hair. That's worth it to me but again she's only a nine pound dog so she doesn't cost much to groom. In my experience because my dog is so small food isn't really that expensive. I mean I'm not buying her gourmet meals or anything it's just like the good kibble so I want to make sure that she's healthy. I always look at the ingredients and stuff like that. For me food just isn't that much because again she's so small but please keep in mind that if you have a bigger dog like my boyfriend has a bulldog that dog 
eats. So depending on the size of your dog, you might have to spend more on food, you might have to spend less. It depends also how much you can afford in terms of food that has quality ingredients. Some of the food can get really expensive. It's very easy to find something that's in your budget and good for your dog as well. Um, talk to your vet. Toys. It's gonna be exciting when you get the dog. You're gonna buy them all these toys and they're gonna probably destroy all of them. Luna is a destroyer. My family dog is a Shih Tzu. Her name is Ginger. We've had her for almost 13 years and I swear she's never broken a toy before in her life. She still has her little bunny that she got when she was a puppy. Some dogs are destroyers, some dogs are not. Get to know your dog and if your dog is a destroyer, don't buy them a ton of plush toys. Now Luna is restricted to toys that she can't break, which isn't many and that's just her fault. The most expensive part of having a dog I would say is go into the vet and because i got her as a puppy she needed quite a few rounds of shots i was not prepared for how much that was gonna be i think my first vet bill was like $400 for the shots. And then my next one was 150. After a year, it was time for her to get her yearly shots. So kind of just to update the shots. That bill was $400 again. And I didn't think it was gonna be that much. They give you the whole breakdown of everything. So like I understand and it is what it costs. But after that, that bill, I decided to go with pet insurance and I wanted to make sure that the pet insurance would cover her yearly shots as well. So right now I have insurance through lemonade and I pay $35 a month which roughly comes out to like $400 a year maybe I don't know I did the math a long time ago so it's about there so to me it's worth it to have this coverage I think of it as basically putting money away every month so that when it does come time for her to have her annual physical and all that good stuff in her shots that lemonade covers it and I basically already paid for it all year now the best part about it is that she does have accidental insurance with this up to $10,000 and it's a $500 deductible which means that if she was to break her arm get a squeaker stuck in her throat or something like that if I have to take her for some emergency if the bill is over $500 I only have to pay out of my pocket $500 and the rest will be covered by my insurance simply because I have the insurance so that to me is extremely worth it I don't know if you can see but Luna's arms are very small very long all it takes is one little accident for you to end up in the animal hospital with your dog and uh, be paying $10,000 for a broken leg some of my family members have also told me stories. The dogs in their old age, a little bit older age, they have something wrong with their hip or there's something wrong here or there. And before they know it, they spent $10,000 on their dog because they've had their dog for 10 years and they love them. So I never want to be in a situation where I have to choose, can I afford to save my dog's life or can I not? That's why I spend $35 a month. I'm personally very happy with it right now. It gives me peace of mind. Hi, a little intermission here. I'd like to take this time to address Luna's stone face throughout this whole entire video. Um, she does this pretty often, she's pretty stoic, and it's giving Mr. Krabs meme squinting eyes. That is all. Continue. So the time commitment, specifically of a puppy, or really just even of any dog. Having a puppy, we're talking about the first few weeks of potty training, is simply brutal. It doesn't matter if you lived on a high rise like I did, or if you have your own house. The puppy is not always gonna know where to go. Their brain is like a peanut, it's like mush. They have no idea what anything is, and it's your job to make sure that they understand where they are, what's appropriate, what's going on. You're basically training your dog to understand that your house is the den. The whole entire house is the den. I remember I was researching so much and that goes into the time commitment too. I researched that basically your dog understands your house or your living space in sections. So you have to make sure that they understand that every single section is home. It's part of the den. So they can't go to the bathroom here. That takes a lot of watching your dog, being on top of your dog. If they start having an accident somewhere where they're not supposed to, you're running them to the puppy pad, praising them every time they do something good. That in itself, just the training is a huge time commitment, but it's so worth it if you train them right. This one's a squeaker. She barks, she squeaks. It's it's just a lot. The faster that you can get them to understand that they can't just like bark at anything, the better. If you're like me, if you have neighbors, they might be upset. I've had a complaint or two. I've had a passive aggressive comment or two, but that was also when I first moved to this apartment specifically. <sighs> 
it's fine. Puppies, and depending on the breed you have, they always want to play. This one, she's two years old, but she's a chihuahua, high energy. She always wants to play. It doesn't matter what time it is. She could be napping at nine o'clock at night on the sofa, and then I'll make a sudden move. I'll have, a, I'll be picking up her toys to put them in her toy bin, and she'll see the toys she wakes up, she wants to play. <laughs> so that's part of the time commitment too. They need to be run around a lot. Sometimes I'll go outside and run with her. I love when I'm at my parents' house because I can go outside with her and run around freely in the backyard because there's a fence. And sometimes I'll take her to the dog park. I don't do it too often because um, she is really small. And even though she is vaccinated with all her stuff, it still makes me nervous. I just don't want to get her sick. But there's a dog park near me that's usually empty. Last is part of the time commitment. I actually took her to pet smart training when she was a puppy because I felt like I was doing really good on my own at first but then there were just some things that I was so nervous that I wasn't going to be able to drill into her head. Taking her to the classes was actually a huge help because she was learning by watching the other dogs. I realized that she was really treat motivated, very food motivated, and she picked up everything so incredibly quick. I actually ended up doing intermediate training with her as well. I swear if I did not take her to any type of training, I don't think she'd be as good as she is now. I really don't. She's a really, really well-behaved dog. Traveling and your freedom. Her schedule is now my schedule. I take her everywhere that I can if I'm traveling a short distance. When I first got her, I would take her to Target all the time. Everything's pretty close to me where I live right now, so I don't mind leaving her if I have to go on a grocery run or anything like that, but if I'm going to my parents' house, I usually stay there too, so I take her. One of my close friends lives a bit away. Sometimes when I visit her, I take Luna as well. If I'm taking her for an overnight trip or an extended overnight trip, I have to make sure to pack all of her food and take her crate and all the obvious stuff. It's kind of a lot of work to take a dog with you, but it's better for me to take her than to get a sitter for her. More cost effective, obviously, but this is something that you have to think about if you're gonna travel and you can't take the dog with you, where are you gonna leave the dog? Their service is like Rover and I haven't had to use Rover yet. It's hard sometimes to find a dog sitter. When I'm on vacation, I usually just leave her with my parents, which I'm extremely grateful for, but I'm planning to move out of state at some point. So when I'm no longer near my parents, I have to think about where am I gonna leave her when I go on vacation? I'm actually taking my first family vacation. So my parents aren't gonna be able to take care of her this time around when I go away with them. So we're actually gonna leave her in the kennel for the first time, which is kind of nerve wracking to me, but she's also gonna be with my family dog who she's super familiar with. And they're gonna put them in kennels facing each other. So they'll see each other. I think it'll be okay. If I don't wanna take her to overnight plans, that I have with a friend or visiting family or something like that, I have to make sure that my plans are either really early in the evening or really late so that I have that time in between to come home, take her out, and make sure that she's all taken care of before I go out for the night. The other part to that is that if I am going somewhere overnight without her and I did make sure that I took her out late enough so that she'll be okay until the morning, I have to come back in the morning so early. I'd have to leave like maybe seven o'clock in the morning, six o'clock if I really had to which I personally don't mind because I really don't like overstaying my welcome in the morning. I don't like having an extended breakfast or anything after a night out or something like that. Sorry, friends. So to me, it doesn't really bother me that much. It's just the fact that I have to do it. Just keep that in mind. Like everything that you want to do, you have to remember that you have a dog. And if you don't have roommates or someone else in your house to help take care of the dog and it's only you, you're gonna have to figure out a way to make it work. And to finish this off, I'm gonna give you all the pros I have. I used to really suffer from depression and anxiety, but now I mainly only suffer from anxiety. And even now it's not super bad. I remember when I first got Luna, I was extremely anxiety ridden. And I can tell you this little dog helped me so much. She loves me. She brings me so much happiness. And I just feel like we're two peas in a pod sometimes. I'm really introverted and I like that I live alone. I really enjoy living alone. I don't want a person in here with me per se right now. So a dog really fulfills that need for companionship. This dog in particular, I feel like she's a cartoon character. She's not real. If you knew, if you only knew how animated she was, this dog is like so funny. She's so funny. Say hi to everyone. Say hi to everyone. She's a little sweetheart. Everyone loves her. We all love Luna. 
Right, Lou? She's looking outside. She likes looking outside. I'm always pro get a dog. Your life will change for the better. I don't want to equate having a dog to having a child because obviously a child is like so much more work. But if you wanted to have a child, I would highly recommend getting a dog first and seeing how that goes because it's, it's a high level of responsibility. Like it's a step under from having a child, I would say. I don't have kids, but I can only assume. This is like having a child, only you can put it in a crate and it's legal to leave them home alone basically. We'd like to thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like our content. And if you have any questions that I didn't address, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to get to them. See you in the next one.